Hi everybody, uh, this is Jess and I'm back with a new video for you. I just wanted to do a big shout out to everybody who is um, subscribing and following me on my videos. I'm really um, completely humbled by it, really. I have now over a thousand followers, which is not a big deal in YouTube world, but for me that's a pretty big deal. And I read every single one of your comments and I try to respond to every single one of them. So I'm really glad I'm able to help so many of you guys and keep sending me your comments and keep watching the videos and please subscribe and like if you haven't already. Um, anyway, as a thank you for um, following me, I thought I would do something a bit different today. I would like to do an artist challenge. So I'd like to involve you, my faithful followers, to do a challenge along with me. So what I would like you to do is to draw by hand um, a dog, any dog you like. As you can see here, I have a drawing I have done of an English bulldog, um, very fitting for me as I am originally from England. Um, and uh, this guy has, a, you know, some little Winston Churchill kind of a, a theme going on. So I did this drawing in pencil and then went over the top of it with ink. And what's so important to me about my method um, with digital watercolor is that you first start out with real drawing, with real art, and then you scan it into your computer. And then all you're doing is, is basically putting the cherry on top. You're adding color. Um, you can change things and modify them in, in Photoshop, but um, in general, your bones are your, are your artist skills that you already have. So, um, follow along with this tutorial, and then when you're done, please send me a picture of your finished art. Do a drawing of a dog and then color it in Photoshop using my watercolor technique in any way that you like, whatever um, speaks to you. And then I'd love it if you would post a link to it in the comment section. Um, and then I will check it out. And uh, you can do that. Or also you could message it to me on my Facebook page, which is at Jess Bircham Illustration. Um, you can follow me on there and uh, you could post it to my page or just message it to me. And I will pick one follower, one picture from somebody and I will... Uh, make a new video about it and uh, we'll have a talk about that and I will do a big shout out for the for whoever does you know something that really grabs my attention so I really hope that you try this out um, do a drawing of a dog and uh, yeah do some awesome art so here we go I'm going to take this um, Mr. Bulldog here and uh, he already has a pretty cool drawing and the thing with drawing by hand is you know um, sometimes you just really get it and you do a great job and you're like, yes, and then you go and put it into Photoshop and if you don't already know my technique, you're like, oh man, I'm going to lose everything I just did because I'm going to have to go over it now and get rid of all my original drawing. Well, you don't have to. All you're doing is adding to it. So let's go ahead and we're going to um, grab this guy with our lasso tool. Do -do -do, around we go and command C to copy him. We're going to go up to file new and we're going to do a um, let's do an 8 by 8 canvas size resolution 300 at least color mode um, we can leave it RGB or you can put it to CMYK if you're going to be printing it okay but for now I'll keep it on RGB as it's just a screen okay Right, so we've got our background paper, and remember, this is the, if you haven't seen my videos, this is the steps to do. Go ahead and make a new folder, a new group right here. Press on this folder. It says group, and you've got to edit. Oops, sorry. Oh, brain pop. There we go. Sorry. Actually, sorry, you want to go to the mask here, add vector mask. Then you want to go to edit, fill, pattern. Make sure that your pattern is on, hold over it, it should show up, gauche light on watercolor. Okay, and if you haven't already got that, you just go ahead and you click here, this whirly gig, go to artist surfaces, 
press append to add to your selection and it just added them all over again for me it is the second second to the last yep right there you could try any of these but this is the one that I use for watercolor okay as you can see it made this box a dark gray we're going to lighten that box because what that means is that's a heavy amount of texture so go to your levels which is command L on a Mac and take this arrow to the right and go ahead and scoot, as you can see at the bottom here, if you watch this box here, scoot the arrow over, you can see it changes the texture amount. So I'm gonna do it right in the middle of the graph. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a layer. Now this layer is going to be your drawing layer. So go ahead, double click and call it drawing. It's always good to have lots of organization in your art. And then um, this layer needs to be on Multiply because Multiply will allow you to see through it, okay? Um, you're going to be adding a, another layer. As you can see, whenever you click that, it immediately puts it above it. Call it Color. You're going to keep it on Normal, don't change it, and I want you to drag it under Drawing. So the drawing will sit on top of the Color layer. And go ahead and click back on your drawing layer. Go to your drawing. Make sure you've got that Command C and Command V to paste it. There he is. And then, as you can see, it's left like a dirty paper mark. So we're going to go back to levels, Command L, and we're going to click on the white eyedropper tool and clean up this image. Just click anywhere on the paper, and there you go. See, it's cleaned him up. Lovely. Okay. And then you can move him around if you, you know, want to put him in a particular spot. That's good. And so that drawing layer is going to um, stay there. And now we're going to go back down to the color layer. And now I'm just going to start adding color. Um, now I use a watercolor brush that um, I will make sure there's a link to. But you can use any brush you want. Um, you'll still get... Um, a kind of a watercolor effect. Sometimes I like to just use this kind of blur um, tool because it's very soft. I like that for human skin tones. Um, that's a good brush for that. Um, but in general, if you want to do a watercolor painting, I just do the watercolor brush. And I use the watercolor brush for everything, for blocking in color and outlining. Okay, so, um, First thing I usually like to do is decide where is my light coming from on my picture. Um, as he's shaped like this, to me the light would be coming from this direction, from the left to the right. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a pale yellow. And let's see. We've got the mode on multiply for the color, opacity at 100%. I'm just going to go ahead and start blocking in some color. wherever I want. Okay. And obviously you can do whatever colors you want. Um, this is just my method. I'm going to go for a slightly warmer color now, slightly warmer orange, and go right next to it on top of it. And then I'll probably put this on his chest because his chest would be sticking out right here. Maybe a bit on his chin there. Okay. And now I'm going to go for some cool colors. So into the kind of blue aqua um, spectrum. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do for shadow. I'm going to make it a bit smaller in my brush. So anywhere that there's a shadow, I like to start with some cool colors, some blue, maybe a bit of purple. Um, you don't have to do yours like this, but if you would like somewhere to start, then go ahead and copy this um, method. Copy the way that I'm doing it, the color that I'm doing. You might find that you enjoy it. I always say that, um, 
copying another artist's work is is just a, another way to learn. Uh, it's really a um, very valuable tool. I think everybody should uh, actually try learning from people who they find inspirational. And you'll never be able to replicate exactly what someone else does. So you just can't, it's impossible. Um, but it is a great way to learn and figure out what you like. If you think back to the masters, that's how they learned. They weren't allowed to do their own drawings right away. They had to work as an apprentice under a master and they had to copy in his style and learn from him before they were even allowed to do their own art. So they would copy his work first, then they would be allowed to progress to still life. Then after that, they would be allowed to start doing life drawing, and from there they could do their own art. But it was a progression, and that's how they learned, and that's really how they got some great basics and great fundamentals. A bit darker, maybe a bit gray now. Okay, I'm going to really start pushing in some shadows. You might have a shadow here from his cigar. He's a very cool dog. And I love Winston Churchill. Someone's hat. Okay, I'll put on his monocle. Okay, so those are like your light and your darks. Um, just basically put in. I think I'm going to go with a dark blue, maybe even a little royal blue. Zoom in on here. And then what you can always do is, I'll show you real quick, color something in. And obviously there's white dots. That's what he had. Winston Churchill was famous for his bow tie with his polka dots on it. Um, and then let's say I like that, but I can't see my white dots anymore. So I'll go in and take the eraser. I'll probably put it on a more blurred brush and I might even just take the opacity down a bit so that I'm not erasing all of it. There we go. Just pull off a little and then you can go back and erase more. Maybe where the light would really hit I would hit that more. There we go. And then the shadows just maybe once. And sweet. And then I think I'm going to give some similar color to his hat. And maybe even on his nose. I don't like to use a ton of different colors. I like to try and use the same colors um, throughout my art. Once when I was a young girl living in England, um, I was going for a walk in the countryside with my dog. And I came across an artist sitting by a canal and he was painting a landscape of some um, village houses and, and some cows. And I watched him just sort of fascinated and he told me something that I will never forget. He said, don't use a bunch of different colors. Don't use every color that you have in your palette. Stick to just a few and use those. And you know, it's the less is more kind of scenario. And I think he's so right. If we kind of go overboard with our colors, it's, we can kind of lose uh, the picture. It kind of gets a bit too much. Okay. Nice to be loved, giving a bit of a dark nose. 
And his cigar needs a bit of a shadow here. Okay. And then a monocle. And then when it gets smaller and I can zoom in a bit and just even get his eye a little. Okay, good. All right, he's kind of coming together. Um, I think I'm going to start adding a bit of color now, a bit more color, um, some brown tones, warm colors, because this bulldog's going to have some brown on him. Let's see what this looks like. May or may not like it. Now you might think, well, you're just going over the top of your color. Well, actually, you're still keeping the color underneath it because you're using the multiply effect. So you're still getting some blue coming through, which is great. I might go over the edge and I'll clean up later. Okay, a little bit more so I can get to my front. And just for time's sake, I will just speed up this video. And uh, yeah, I will catch you in a minute. He's kind of fun. My little English bulldog, Mr. Winston Churchill, the big bully. He was known as the bulldog. <laughs> okay, I'm going to clean up just a few parts around the edges. Oops, make sure my opacity is at 100%. Of course, you don't have to clean it up. You could leave it like that. And I might leave a little bit like that, actually. I don't like things to be too perfect looking. I might give it a bit of a shadow. And here's an um, here's where this tool comes in good. This brush here that's kind of soft round, um, just a normal soft round brush. You can find that on all of your Photoshop softwares. And if I'm doing a shadow, I don't like to put it on the same layer as my color. I like to, just in case I mess up. So I add another layer put it underneath color and call it shadow. It has to stay under color so that I'm not going on top of it. And then I'll just add that under. See how it's just like a soft kind of color. I like that, it's not too in your face. And then as you can see, it's showing some white marks around the bottom here. So what I need to do, see that? That is actually my color. Let me turn it off. See, that's the color coming across. I just need to go back in my color layer and just erase a bit of that. Because the color layer is kept to normal, the shadow is also on normal, but um, because color is normal, it won't do the multiply effect, which means it will show up on top of any layer you put underneath it. There we go. It's pretty cool. Just blend that in a little. There we go. Okay.
So yeah, I would love to see some of your artwork using my watercolor technique. And uh, I'd love to just give you an art challenge for the new year. Happy New Year. I hope 2018 brings you much joy and lots of creativity. And yeah, I'd love to see your work. So go ahead and uh, send it to me on Jess Birch and Illustration on Facebook, or you can post a link to it in the comments section below. But yeah, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.